There are so many uncommon tips that nobody talks about and they will help you a lot as a beginner photographer. So many tips talk about how to become a better photographer, how to make money with your photos and many other topics that are very important as well. And I do start weekly videos talking about this, so make sure to subscribe to my channel if we share the same passion for photography and the creative industry. But there are many uncommon tips that you really need to know as well. I did learn them the very hard way when I became a full-time freelance photographer and creative director in London. So I'm gonna focus on seven, but for sure I'm gonna keep them coming on my channel because there are way too many. I did learn a lot in this country. And the first one would be to stop focusing in social media growth. I know you're gonna tell me, Laura, you need a following because you're gonna get reputation, right? And that's true, when you have a following, things are easier. But you don't have to focus on this right now. You have to focus on getting better with your camera and the rest will follow. And I say this because when I started as a beginner photographer, even years later, I was focusing too much on Instagram. And now you can agree with me that growing on Instagram is very hard because you need to post photos, you need to post Instagram stories, you need to post a lot of Instagram reels, and this is very time consuming. And if you are a beginner, that time, you needed to improve your photography. I'm not saying to don't have Instagram. You have to have it and you have to be active there as you can, but please don't focus on this only. Focus on getting better. And this is gonna take me to the next tip, which is to focus on building a portfolio with collaborations. Yes, working for free. Why? Because many of you are telling me, Laura, how am I gonna make a portfolio if I'm not shooting with clients? Nobody needs to know they are not clients. <laughs> you can shoot with friends, with family, with beginner models for instance, product photography at home. I love this because you're gonna be able to learn a lot. And what you have to do is do a niche down portfolio before you contact any client. This is such a beginner mistake and I used to do it as well. I was sending out a very bad portfolio or very mixed up. So for example, if you are targeting a product photography brand, don't send them a portfolio with product photos, fashion photography, portrait photography, Stop thinking that versatility in the portfolio is gonna give you more chances. This is not true. Versatility is gonna give you more clients. I agree with that. But when you are targeting one specific client, approach them with a specific portfolio. If it's product photography, send a portfolio with just product photos. And this takes me to the following tip, because no, I'm not telling you to shoot within one niche only. Shoot within many niches. If you follow my channel, I tell you this all the time. If you're a beginner, you probably don't know what you want yet. And if you know it, well done, because it took me years to figure it out myself. And that's totally fine. Things are gonna be easier for you. But you need to experiment because you're gonna find out that you're gonna like some niches that you thought you wouldn't. I was a surf photographer. I was doing sports photography, wildlife and lifestyle sometimes. And I thought for myself, I will never become a portrait photographer. I don't like shooting with people. I think it's too much hassle because you have to leave them, blah, blah, blah. And now I'm a creative portrait photographer and I shoot a lot with non-models because they are music artists and creatively as well. So it's quite hard and I freaking love it. And I discovered this when I was practicing with the many niches, guys. So please don't be scared to try with the many and then maybe choose one that you really like, like me portrait photography, but don't stop shooting within others because this is gonna make you more money in the long run, like it happened to me. So many times I shoot with models, then if there are no clients, I shoot product photography. If there is no product photography, I shoot something else. Being versatile is gonna give you more clients, but as a beginner, try within many niches to see what you like the most. The next tip is something incredibly important, and I've never heard about this before. Hang out with the right people in the right places. And I'm not talking in real life, I'm talking in social media. I'm sorry you are on Instagram, on TikTok, Facebook, wherever you want to be. All these apps are great for business. You have to be there, I agree with that. I'm there because it's great to find potential clients. But to find inspiration sometimes can be kind of toxic because you're gonna be comparing yourself to others in terms of likes, following, and things like that. You don't need that as a beginner. You need a place where you can sell your photography, your videos, and your creativity without any pressure or any algorithm. And this app is Vero. I've been sharing with you Vero for over a year already. They are sponsoring today's video. And I think it's a great place for creatives because there is no algorithm, there are no ads, and you can share whatever you want. 
you can sell photography without a crop, full size. People are gonna be able to see the full size of your photos. You can sell video as well. You can sell links of YouTube videos, for instance, or blog posts. You can sell movies. You can sell whatever you want. So it's a real social media network and it's very fun to use because it's more about having fun, socializing with other creatives and no pressure at all with algorithms, accumulating likes or following. This is just about hanging out and enjoy the app. And it's very good as well because everything is found in the discovery tab chronologically. So for example, people can also discover you because if they go to the discovery tab and you just share one photo, people gonna see it. No algorithms. So I think this is great and you're gonna have fun over there, guys. It's great to find inspiration from other creatives. So please join Vero. I'm gonna put my Vero handle below. I always put it at the beginning of my videos as well. Follow me over there, say hi and comment on my photos because I always reply to every comment. And I think it's gonna be very beneficial for you to have a place to relax and stop accumulating likes or followers or whatever. Just share your photos and hang out with others. So thank you so much Vero for sponsoring today's video and for creating such an amazing community. We all need it. And the next tip would be something I really needed to do myself time ago and I'm sure you need to do it as well. And it's taking your camera everywhere. With your camera, I mean any camera you may have. It doesn't matter which one. It can be even your phone, but always experiment. I'm sure on your way to work, you can shoot during the sunrise, during the sunset when you are coming back home, in your lunch break, street photography, portrait photography, whatever you want. What happened is most likely you are very busy in your full-time job and you don't have time to grab that camera. This happened to me all the freaking time in London and it was very discouraging because you are very disconnected to your creative side. And trust me, this helps a lot when you are a beginner. If you feel creative, if you have your camera with you everywhere, even if you don't end up using it, but you have it there, you're gonna be more motivated overall. So please take your camera everywhere with you. And even if it's a phone, that's fine. Try to take pictures every day because having that connection with your creative side is gonna help you a lot to grow and practice. And the next tip is very related to this as well. And it's to don't focus on gear. And you're gonna be, Laura, that is not an uncommon tip because everyone says gear doesn't matter. Well, I do have a full video about this that you can check out later. I know that gear does matter. That's what I think. It does matter because when I improve my camera and my gear, my work improves immensely. But don't take me wrong with this. I started as a full-time freelance photographer and I made it happen with an average camera of 18 megapixels and a kit lens, okay? So you can make it happen and you can make money regardless of your gear, even if it's a phone. Because thanks to social media, so much content is made with the phone. You can see so many content creators with amazing cameras and they are shooting content for brands in their phone. Because the phones are very powerful nowadays and it's easy to shoot with the phone to then edit with the phone and upload with the phone in social media. So don't be discouraged with your gear because at the beginning we all start with nothing and then when we make more money, we upgrade, okay? It cost me almost 15 years to get the gear I have today. So don't be discouraged with this because you can still be creative with your phone even. You can practice lighting, you can practice framing, creativity. So just don't limit yourself and don't get upset and frustrated. I know sometimes can be frustrating, but don't. Just use what you have because you're gonna feel way happier. If you follow my work and you follow my channel, you know about this tip. Get a home photography studio. Even if you have a super tiny place, a room, you're gonna be able to make a super affordable home photography studio. I do have a few videos about this. I'm gonna link one of them below because it's very, very affordable, very cheap. Everyone can have it. And this is gonna help you a lot to get more creative with yourself, experiment with portrait photography with yourself like I do. I love self-portrait photography because I experiment so much with myself and I enjoy it a lot. Nobody's watching. So you can do that or experiment with your family, with your friends in your photography studio to learn about lighting, about posing. You're gonna learn a lot with your home photography studio. And if you are into product photography, for instance, the same, you can take your iPhone or whichever phone you have, your camera and I don't know, products at home and shoot product photography in your place. This is gonna be good for learning, but also for shooting with clients. I was doing this. Lately, I'm not doing too much product photography. I'm doing more portrait, which is what I love the most. 
but if I have to, I can do it in the comfort of my own home. And again, what I told you before, when you are surrounded with your gear and you have a creative space, you're gonna feel more creative and motivated every single day to keep improving yourself. If you have all the gear in your camera bag, you don't have a home photography studio, you don't take your gear anywhere with you, it's gonna be very hard for you to push forward. You definitely have to watch this video I'm gonna put here so you can create your home photography studio today. Every time you get from work or any weekend, whenever you want, you're gonna be able to have your creative space to create. And I think this is great. So again, subscribe to my channel if you didn't yet and like the video if you took something good from it. And I will see you very soon in the next one. Big love.